Hello everyone, welcome to our Tuesday Q&A. Today is Wednesday. Yes, because there was breaking news yesterday and there's more today. That's but right. But we'll talk about that later. So typically we do it on Tuesday, but today is Wednesday. We're doing our Q&A. We ask, take questions from you, email to us at questions at itmtrading.com. If you'd like them to be considered, send them to questions at itmtrading.com. And uh, I put them here on a one sheet. I ask them to her live. She's not seen any of these questions. So you get a really true live organic response. So Dr. Music Maker. Okay. Okay. I like Speaking music. to one of the videos he did recently about negative interest rates. <sighs> yes. When the banks drive us to negative rates and then electronic money, how are we going to use our gold and silver? I'm assuming we have to convert it into the electronic money first, the same way we would if we were in paper money. Well, that would be correct. So, and that's the whole point of gold outside of the system where you can convert it, or silver as well, where you can convert it as you need it and therefore maintain and protect your purchasing power, particularly when we go into negative rates on your savings and on your checking accounts. Because if you leave your principal in there, well, then it just goes away pretty rapidly. In fact, if, if you were, well, this isn't on, on savings rates, but the 10-year uh, German bond right now, you're paying them 6% to loan them money. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it is, although I love the IMF saying negative rates are not a law of nature. They are a policy choice. Oh, my God. I mean, that's just ridiculous. I'm going to work my butt off. I'm going to save my money, and then I'm going to pay you to take my money from me. Yeah, that, that's not a law of nature. Where do you that's... do that? It's called the IRS. <laughs> Good point, Eric. Good Al point. Albert S. says or asks, is it possible that pension funds and mutual funds will be forced to buy negative rated bonds? They already are. Because they need to hold a certain amount of bonds in their fund. They already are. In fact, um, I just showed you that on that negative rate uh, bond, Megan, maybe you'll put that link in the bottom. But yeah, they already are. Who do you think is buying them? Are you buying them directly, doing it knowingly? Heck no, it's done through institutional investors because boy they just want to make sure that you get something back oh my god so Virginia, yeah they already are Virginia K what are the historical reasons a currency loses its world reserve currency status typically <clears throat> they first abuse that status which we certainly have by exporting inflation, first inflation and now forcing everybody into deflation globally. And then what ends up happening, and, it, and of course it depends partly on how the money's created in the system, but frequently, like with Great Britain, they had so much debt that, you know, uh, the, those members that were treating them, and they were the, the world reserve currency, lost confidence. And then they're attacked from multiple fronts, which I did a recent video, though I don't quite remember which one, but I remember this piece, which is already happening in the U.S. I mean, globally, we, we're not really well liked anymore because we've abused that power. And then so then the countries around them lose confidence. And then ultimately, because you end up in a period of inflation, leading to that hyperinflation, the public loses confidence in the currency. So it happens in, in stages, but we're not, we're, we're not early in that stage. We're late in that stage. Okay, Tim J asks, what happens to gold stocks when the market crashes, when the stock market crashes? Well, a gold stock is a stock. And so um, I think that I showed you, these questions actually seem similar to what we just answered, but we'll be taking live questions anyway. What do you mean? Um, when you were out last week, are those the questions you had? Because they kind of sound familiar. Okay, well. Because I did these, I did these yesterday. Oh, okay, okay. Well, 
I guess we had similar questions. Maybe last, they were. Maybe they last were. week. But you know, but these are the questions that people are really asking right now because of what's happening in all of the I markets. I hope they're not the same questions. I hope they're not. <laughs> but we'll get other new questions anyway. Megan's looking. It's okay. Go no, ahead, answer that question. Oh, they're not. Okay. So what so happens to that? gold stocks? Okay. Gold stocks um, when stock market crashes. Well, gold stocks do too because gold stocks are not gold. They are shares in a corporation and typically you mean gold, gold miners. miners. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And and typically they carry a lot of debt with them. Maybe they've forward sold or whatever. So they're going to react along with the stock market cuz they are a stock. And um, we had a, a graph that Megan just put up the last time. That, that's what dawned on me because I know we, we talked about it. In 2008, what you saw was spot dropping about 32 to 35%. The gold mining stocks also plunged, I think, about that level. But we'll, we'll give you that graphic again. And, and uh, let's see, it was, what did I do? It was three. It was the stock market. It was the, oh, and then it was the, the physical only, so the collectible market, that even though those two other areas of gold in the fiat markets were dropping, in the uh, physical only collectible gold, that's when they made their new highs, in, or their most recent highs. Not, not the highest ones they'll ever make, but inside of this trend gotcha. cycle. So, you know, if it's fiat, it's fiat. I'm not saying never have that, but let this dust settle out. Do not catch a falling knife. All right, so Jim P. asks, you showed us charts on six countries where gold hit all-time highs. Yes. How can this happen in other currencies while the price of gold in dollars is roughly $400 lower than its all-time high? Well, there's two, things, there's two things about that. Number one, currencies will fall in, in the fiat world, when they talk about a strong dollar or what have you, fiat versus fiat. So these other currencies right now where you see gold making new highs, those currencies are weak. They're weak against the U.S. dollar, and they're also weak relative to gold. So that's how that can happen, because not everything is dollar-centric. We now also have, uh, for the most part, I mean, this is, this is happening more and more where currencies used to be pegged. So if those currencies were pegged directly to the US dollar, then as reflected in the price of their spot gold in that currency, it would look very similar to right. the dollar. Same price action because it's pegged. Exactly. But the pegs have been, broken, been breaking and that actually started well, a while ago. Um, and it's continued on. I mean, I'm thinking the Swiss surprise, but actually free floating has been Let's see, they repegged in the 2000s. Pardon me, I'm just kind of seeing an image in my head. But they repegged in the 2000s and then they started to depeg in, um, yeah, 2015. It was the Swiss surprise, was a real big surprise on the um, pegs that were breaking. And then, and that trend has been escalating. And simply because when, when something is pegged, that means that, that this country must behave as if it's whatever currency they peg to. So for example, in the failing, failing Euro experiment, everybody was pegged to the then, and maybe even now, strongest economy. Where you hear my hesitation is that Germany is in deep doo-doo. You're gonna pay, like I said earlier, you're going to pay them 6% to loan them money. So, and their, their uh, manufacturing index came out way, I'm going to, you'll see this a little bit later today, way worse than what was anticipated. Having said that, because they have AAA rated credit, all of the other countries in the Eurozone were able to borrow at those same rates, even though their economies were definitely not like Germany's. So if Germany's in trouble, I'm telling you the other ones are, have got to be in even worse trouble, frankly. But because of that, no pegs ever last. No connections like that have ever lasted. And we're witnessing the Euro collapse right now. But that's how, that's how that can happen because it's, it's their currency against 
other currencies, which is how they always report it, but it's also their currency against gold. And clearly in those six countries, which I can't remember all of them, but I know one was the Japanese yen. Oh, we're going to be talking about Japan tomorrow. Uh, and let's see, it was the Japanese yen, the Australian dollar. And by the way, uh, Australia has some, some um, laws that are going into place that are limiting cash purchases. So they're getting ready to go cashless. That just happened after I did the IMF report on that. And if you guys have not seen that report, you need to go back and look at it. And I think, didn't you put the link to what's happening in Australia on that? Uh, on when I did after that, because I found it, one of our viewers. Link, put the link. Okay. I'll go, I'll double check. Uh, we after will. The IMF? Uh, yeah, it was after the IMF and it was on uh, Australia's new law that really flowed right into the report on going cashless uh, that I just did Ooh, I from the so. IMF. That does sound from, I, I'll double check. Okay, so we'll get that for you and you should really watch that one as well. But yeah, there's so much going on. Robert yes. J., what other currencies are in the running for reserve currency? Well, <laughs> They're, SDR. They're, all, they're all, yeah, I mean, that's all. Mm -hmm. there, there really isn't anything else that's in the running because everybody is really in the same boat. I mean, who, what do you think? The Chinese Yuan, they allowed it to weaken even more right. today. We're going into a currency war. So, yes, I think I've, I have, I've always thought once China said, what about the SDR in 2009? Yeah. That's when I said, yep, that's it. Right. That's it. So... Um, Cody H, is this the beginning of the gold and silver bull market run? Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, we've had the one cup uh, formation completing. And we talked uh, about as this you saw this morning, yesterday. The awareness phase. It, yes, and I'm going to do something on that with those standard uh, graphs, like a uh, trend graphs, like I did recently with uh, real estate, because they all work the same. Right. Uh, so, yeah, we're starting in the early part of the awareness phase in gold, where you're hearing a lot more about it from um, the talking heads on Wall Street, and they're starting to support it. So, yeah. Uh, How long will it last? Well, this is just the beginning of it. Yeah. I mean, this is just the beginning of it. So, I don't know. How long is it going to last till everybody loses trust in the currencies? And a little bit more than that. And, like... A lot more than that. So, I don't uh, know. Okay, let's see. Is beans and rice, is the spike in precious metals due to more fiat needed for purchase? In other words, the dollar is obviously losing value. Well, yeah, because it's never really gold going up. It's gold maintaining its value and the currencies in which gold is valued going down, losing value. So, yeah. If you go to kitco.com and you go to all metals quotes and you go to gold, it'll give you the, um, at the top I think it is, you can click on it and it'll give you the actual amount in the price that it's spiked or gone down in relationship to the dollar and how much is, is related to supply and demand for that particular day because they just do the calculations based upon if there's a value drop or not. So you can actually watch it on a day-to-day -day basis if you really want to. But Yeah, but do you think you're really going to get an accurate view of supply and demand? In that, well, in, they what they do site. is they use the calculation of the value of the dollar, like if how much the value of the dollar lost that particular day versus the gold price, and then they do a calculation and it says this amount was due to that portion. But is anything really accurate when it comes to the gold price? I don't really know if that you can honestly say that is the right. truth. And I mean, we already know fundamental value should be somewhere around north of ten thousand dollars, right? Yeah, way north. If if historical measures were allowed to be in place we already know that right but if it was that we would it would show that it was a failing currency so they, they're not going to let that happen so i mean in reality it's manipulated anyway so it's hard to know exactly where other than true fundamental value right but i'm also curious because i think that when you say they're gonna 
judge it based on how much value the dollar has lost that day. I don't think they're talking about purchasing power. I think they're talking no, about in relation not. to other currencies. They are. They're talking about right. the weighted basket of value of the dollar. I was going to see right. if I could pull it up. That's okay. That's okay. Um, okay. Let's see what else we got here. Can you um, scroll down for me, please, Megan? Let's see. Campa M asks, now that currency war is in full swing, this is what you were talking about yesterday. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm not going to say that it's quite in full uh, swing yet, but yeah, it has begun. It has been announced since it was official that the U.S. labeled China currency manipulator. So yeah, it's official. Is, is it so now that that's going on? Is mm -hmm. it possible they will stop bashing spot gold, which we were just talking about manipulating it, to stop flow of gold to the east? Um, well, first of all, I don't think they give a batootie about where gold flows to, uh, but they have at least at this moment stopped bashing it, and they've gotten on the gold bandwagon. Hence, we had the breakout. When did that breakout happen? Like a month or s about a month ago oh, or something? Oh, the 1280 mark that you were talking about, the 1260 mark? 1250. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 1250 mark. So that was the broke breakout and conclusion. And I believe that I said then we didn't really have very much resistance. We've got a little bit of resistance that I showed you guys. At 1525. Something like that. And then, but I don't think... I think we'll blow through that pretty easily. So yeah, Wall Street has begun to participate, which is what puts it in the awareness phase. Um, that actually, I think you, you said you talked about it yesterday on air about somebody saying because we had we had somebody say that they should they were upset they didn't buy it at twelve seventy and then and I think their quote was like it was at like. It was at 14. like 1470. Now it's at like 1515 or something like that. Yeah. What are you waiting for? Yeah. I mean, seriously, what are you waiting for? Well, if you don't have your insurance policy in place, you need to get it in place. That's for sure. Exactly. Um, okay. You want me to pull that question? No, it's okay. I think she said she talked about it yesterday. In the, I, yeah, in the I did. Thing. Um, Greg O. asks, or no, that doesn't say Greg. It says gurgly. Gurgly? Gurgly? Oh. Gurgly? O asked, hi all, is it true that in the EU, even gold coins from the 1800s are considered bullion? Well, I it don't It depends really... on if it's rare or unusual to collectors, is right. really what it boils down to. That's the language in the United States that has been used in the past, uh, if you're referring to like confiscation and whatnot. So rare and unusual, special value to collectors is the, is the term that you should utilize. I, and I can't really answer for the EU because I'm not really sure. But I would guess that a coin from the 1800s, even in not great condition, would still be rare and unusual. But I don't know that that applies in the EU. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. Betters asks, so, Lynette, you don't believe in leveraging and increasing gold price with a small holding of quality gold mining stocks relative to physical holdings. I don't believe in leverage at this juncture in the trend at all. Now, not saying why, that you why, can't why hold is that, that why is and that? then protect it because, because this is the biggest bubble in the world and it's all around leverage. And because I want to, I mean, if you're using it as an insurance policy against any stocks, whether it's mining stocks or what have you. But I don't look at gold mining stocks and say, oh, that's a leverage play on gold because that is still just a corporation. That's all it is. It's a stock and that's what it is. And right now, what I want to be holding is real money and I want it free and clear. I don't want any leverage on it. I don't feel you need to have any leverage on it. So I wouldn't, so no, I'm not doing leverage on anything. Let that, let that bubble explode. Let us watch for when the smart money is accumulating. If you're looking at something going like this, the smart money is not accumulating. Now, I'm not saying it won't go up and down because, of course, it does. And even when I talk about a cup, obviously, it's not Scroll a perfectly down. smooth cup. But what you're looking for is for the smartest guys in the room to quietly accumulate. 
and just like I've been showing you over time with gold and where silver is right now, which is closer to the bottom of that cup, although, you know, it could certainly come out and conclude it. But gold has concluded the first part of the cup. The next conclusion comes from where they started in 2013. Uh, and by the way, I think a uh, spot right now is like where like it was in April. Oh. Yeah, but it was uh, where it was in April 2013. So, um, yeah, I think CNBC flashed that across this morning. Yeah, that, that actually is a pretty good one. So Sovereign I, Borders asks, at what point would Lynette stop buying gold? Never. <laughs> Guess you said it well, the same way. Yeah. He knew. He knew exactly how she would say it. That's funny. You know, I mean, it's really simple. It's it's real money. So why would you stop buying real money? When so the wait, you don't want dollars? Away? No, I don't. You want I, real money, gold and silver? Yeah. Huh? That's weird. Yeah. Shocker. <laughs> And I don't want intangible shares of stock that with a button push, they can say, too bad, so sad. Not at this current moment in the trend cycle. No. Yeah. Now, that was too not much, always true. Too much risk. Way too much risk. And you're not getting paid for that risk. So, and even with Perception the Perception management's stocks, a powerful thing. Oh, my gosh. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I and... Love the and even when you're, you know, even when you're looking at gold mining stock, I mean, first of all, maybe they're going to do an overt confiscation. Maybe they're not going to do an overt confiscation. I really don't know. But I, what you I mean do of, know of gold, of, of gold, of yes. gold bullion. I guess. Yes. You. Okay. Um, what I do know is that it is much harder to confiscate something that is private and invisible, and if it's what the one percenters buy for themselves and you're in that same category, you have a much better chance of having something that you're actually going to be able to use and then use that leverage, the appreciation leverage in terms of fiat while the others go down to capture gains and move into your next asset, preferably and possibly income producing. Yeah. And just to add, just to pile on top of that, because, you know, t I mean, realistically, gold bullion is private and invisible, right? Yes, it is. It's physical. But, the w and I was having a conversation with one of our customers' clients here the other day in the lobby, and we were talking about this exact thing, and I said to her, you know, that the, the way that they did it, for example, in 1933, and we don't know if they're going to do it the same way, and it's right, right. But history has history has a precedence. But they made it the patriotic thing to do. They said we were going to give you the going rate of gold, and we're also going to make it illegal to use, and we're going to highly penalize it if you don't turn it in, right? So it's going to be illegal to use, penalty if you get caught, ten thousand dollars or a, or a ten year jail sentence or both, and. Um, We'll, but we'll give you the going rate. So people were like, oh, okay, well, I'll just exchange my gold for a dollars. And then they just revalued it at $35 an ounce. Everybody lost 42% of their purchasing power overnight. We've talked about this before, is that, you know, it'll probably occur in some similar way. That They're not going to come door to door and say, give me your gold. No. And I want your gold now. They'll just make it illegal, make it impossible to deal with, give you a penalty if you're caught, and give you the going rate so there's less resistance. Or, or even pay you a premium to the going rate. And then let it go to fundamental value of $10,000 exactly. an ounce. And then, I mean, logically, if you just think about it, that makes the most sense. Why fight people? Just exactly. make it easy. And then just say, hey, we're going to give you, it's $1,400 an ounce, we'll give you $1,500 an ounce. No complaints. Right. And then people go because they don't understand what's happening with the currency anyway. And they go, oh, okay, wow, aren't you nice? You're going to give me a premium. Oh, are you getting a premium? Right. And that's exactly what they did. They gave people, they just gave them the going rate right. and, then, and then put it to $35 an ounce. I mean, it's just a smart way to do it. There's no it resistance. Is. Exactly. Exactly. They're not going to want you to resist. They want you to comply. And they want you to comply with a smile on your face. It's way so, easier. Yep. All right. So what do you got going this week? Okay. Anything cool? So after this. Um, after this, you got to give me a few more minutes and it's not going to be as, you know, <coughs> animated and, and all of that as usual. But I want to talk about what happened in the bond market today. So give me a few more minutes and then I'm going to come back live and I will take your questions afterwards. It's like an, it's an extra thing because there's just so much that's going on.
but tomorrow, you do not want to miss tomorrow. I'm going to be talking about the global currency yield curve inversion and it will blow your mind. What I found, it blew my mind. It's going to blow your mind. So that I'm doing tomorrow. And then uh, next week I'll be on with Vincent Eastwood. He's going to interview me. And um, yeah, make sure that you visit our blog at itmtrading.com. If you like this, subscribe and hit that little button so that we'll let you know when we're going live. Give us a thumbs up. I would say right now you should probably share every single one of our videos. Share, share, share. People that weren't open to them before, if they're watching what's happening in the marketplace at all, may be more open to it. For sure. And, and I would say that a big key one to share is the one that I recently did on the IMF and also negative rates. I mean, I just did that one on Thursday. And when I was gathering that data from data last week, we were at 13.3 trillion in negative yielding bonds. Now we're at 15 trillion and growing after tonight. It'll be interesting to see what those numbers were after what happened in the bond market overnight and today. So which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, go into that in more detail. I'm telling you, if you have not prepared, if you have not created your plan, if you have not put anything in place, what are you waiting for? I mean, seriously, please people. Uh, and, and I'll tell you this too. You made this comment um, before we went on air that when you were reading what I wrote yesterday for the urgent piece that I did, the breaking news story, I'm not even going to say anything. What did you say that you when you were reading it? I said it was obvious to me that you were concerned. And, you know, he I sent him to him. He edits them and reads every single one of and them that I do. every day, every week. Yep. And so would you say that you saw more concern than... Typical? For sure yesterday, for sure. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm what I'm really hoping, and you and I talked about this too, so I know that you've got this same hope, is that they will pull some magic rabbit out of their hat to prolong this. I don't know if they can. That's why I'm nervous, because I know they're out of tools. Yeah, and the problem is, is that it's just at the... It's at the the sacrifice of the future of our country and our families and because... And we're not talking long future. No. I mean, we could be talking about... I mean, I really hate this. We could be talking about days, weeks, months, m maybe years. Yeah, we've just, as a country, <sighs> dug ourselves such a deep hole. As, as not just as a, as a as country, a world. as a world. Yeah. But, what you know, it was inevitable. The system is based on constantly compounding debt. Well, the bill is now due, people. The bill is now due. And it's going to be really, really painful. And that's We're why I buy gold. Times. Right. So when you said, well, you know, is Lynette ever going to stop buying? As long as, there, as long as I don't trust who's running the system, and as long as I need to make sure that my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren, et cetera, as long as I want to make sure that they're okay, I will always hold a position in gold. Maybe not as high as I'm holding it right now, but because that will vary, and the kind, that will vary based upon where what the trend is and where we are in that trend cycle. But if you've got central bankers in control, you're always going to have need of protecting your wealth. And when I look at, you know, look across the pond in England, right? They've been in, they've been in control for more than 300 years. And what do they own? They own tangibles. They own gold. They own gems. They own rare art. They own real estate. They own tangibles. That's what their wealth is based on. That's what my wealth is based on. And that's what I'm going to use to support my children and my grandchildren, et cetera, et cetera. And hopefully they'll all be good stewards of it. That I can't guarantee, but I can do Megan my part. Megan won't. Megan's not going to be. Oh, she'll be awesome. I'm going to be with Frank on the lake, one of our viewers. Uh oh, oh, well, if you talk to Megan about the lake, oh my God, you just want her heart. Yep. 100%. But I hope Robert is not watching today. He is. He has a question. 
Oh. You answered it. <laughs> okay, Robert well, Ray. but but we don't know where Frank is, so don't He's worry, Robert. Phoenix. Uh oh. <laughs> Meet you at the lake. I always say that to him. He knows. Meet you at the lake. Yeah. Okay, well, all right, I'm just going to stop talking about this now. <laughs> and I will see you in a few minutes. Bye bye. Yeah.